Jesus. And they look to heaven expecting as they pray. I just feel like something good is about to happen. And brother, this could be the very day. I just feel like something good is about to happen. I just feel like something good is on its way. He has promised that it open all of heaven. humble themselves and call Jesus, and they look to heaven expecting as they pray, I just feel like something good is about to happen, and brother, this could be the very day, I just feel like something good is going to happen, yes, I just feel like something good is on its way. Has promised that he opened all of heaven, and brother, it could happen any day when God's people humble themselves and call on Jesus, and they look to heaven expecting as they pray. I just feel like something good is gonna happen, and brother, this could be the very day. Like something good is about to happen. Yes, I just feel like something good is on its way. He has promised that it open all of heaven. And brother, it could happen any day. When God's people humble themselves and call on Jesus. And they look to heaven expecting as they pray. I just feel like something. Good is about to happen, and brother, this could be the very day. I just feel like something good is about to happen. Well, I just feel like something good is on its way. He has promised that it open all of heaven, and brother, this could be the very day. When God's people humble themselves and call on Jesus, and they look to heaven expecting as they pray, I just feel like something good is about to happen, and brother, this could be the very day. I just feel like something good is about to happen. Yes, I just feel like something good is on its way. Well, he has promised that he'd open all of heaven. And brother, it could happen every day. When God's people humble themselves and call on Jesus. And they look to heaven expecting as they pray. I just feel like something good is about to happen. And brother, this could be the very day. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Something good has happened. Thank, Thank you, Father. You. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Lord. He Thank always you. does good things, doesn't yes, he? Yes, does. Course. Amen. The name of the Lord is Righteous run into, and they are saved. The name of the Lord is such a mighty strong tower. The righteous run into, oh yes, and they are saved. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, most high. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, 
the name of the Lord Most High. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into, and they are saved. Yes, the name of the Lord is. Just run into, and they are saved. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. Well, blessed be the name of the Lord.
that verse again. Our Christ is revealing himself to me. Whose arm is rising for this world to see. glad this morning that he is revealing Amen. himself to you. You know, used to, we would kindly hear the same sermons over and over. But thank God, revelation is being revealed. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, Hallelujah. things that we never heard, they've always been there. And it's not something new. It's always been there. We just didn't dig in the scriptures enough to find them. Yes. And I'm thankful for that this morning. Praise God. Amen. Jared, when did you slip in here? <laughs> Amen. Good to see you today. A lot of folks out. Uh, uh, Mike's getting out of the rehab today. That's why Joyce is not here. And Wanda had her knee, her knee replaced this week. Larry's back. He'd been in the hospital last week. I'm telling you what. God is good. Amen. God is faithful. Amen. 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 Father, we just thank you for a wonderful day. We thank you for the rain that we needed so much. Thank you, Father. It's, it's like God's big tears are falling. Father, we just thank you that you are revealing yourself to us in a new, new dimension. On every level, whatever level we're on, you're, re, you're revealing yourself to us, and we thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, praise God. Anybody have a testimony of the goodness of God this past week? Amen. Anybody? Dave, you got one? Okay, come on up here and share it. Amen. Dave's... Been taking chemo and got a lot of platelet problems and he's still kicking though. I haven't been taking the chemo, it's been forced on me. <laughs> oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, you know, um, sometimes you begin to wonder about what God is, 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 is really doing, you know? It, it's not straightforward. And uh, I was reading in the scriptures uh, this past week, uh, my God shall provide all your needs uh -huh. in Christ Jesus. Yes. All. Uh, obviously, the things that I want and don't have are not... Uh, uh, at the top of God's list of my needs right now. And, and I'd like to suggest to him otherwise, yeah. but uh, he, he's got his plan yes. for me. I will meet all your needs. Uh -huh. And, I, you know, I ponder that a lot. Um, uh, all the way from, is God so out of touch <laughs> about needs? Um, what, what, what really are our needs uh, that, that he's promised to meet? Yes. And um, it goes backwards and forwards. Now, it, it, I'm not digressing now, but um, there's an Irish singer that died this past couple of weeks, Sinead O'Connor. And uh, I guess you have to be, I I'm not Irish, but I guess you have to be Irish to understand how a lady can stand up and sing, Oh Danny Boy, and thousands of people will be weeping. I guess you've got to be Irish to <laughs> kind of 
figure that one out. And uh, she passed away, and uh, they had a kind of, um, what do you want to call it, a remembrance service where they used some of her famous songs. Uh, and I just listened to it. Uh, and, uh, not, not because I'm a fan of hers, but because I was just curious. Mm -hmm. And she sings a song there that really tore me up. She says, if I don't have it, then I don't want it. Can I say that again? If I don't have it, I don't want it. My God shall meet all my needs. And if I don't have it, I don't need it. Can, 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 can I really get that into the depth of who I am? Uh -huh. If I don't have it, I don't need it. Because God will meet all my needs. And uh, uh, so I, I don't have an answer for it. I don't say, I'm not here to say this is how you're supposed to interpret it. I'm as puzzled as many of you are. <laughs> but I tell you this, that God's word is true. Yes, and amen. just because we don't grasp the depth and the width and the height of it right now, it's still true. Amen. And he is meeting all my needs. Get that into your thick head, David. <laughs> He's meeting all my needs. And uh, I, I, I've got to live and walk in that truth that he's meeting all my needs. And uh, that's it. That's all I wanted to share. Does it fit in there? It used to. Used to oh, look at that. I don't do that often. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have something to share? Brother Dave, they ask a little girl to uh, say the Lord's Prayer. And she said, the Lord is my shepherd, and that's all I want. <laughs> that's good. That's good. <laughs> Amen. Anybody else got a... I got one to share. All right. Um, I don't think you're on. Uh, there we go. This, some of you know my niece, Jamie Lynn, and a lot of you probably don't because there are a lot of new faces. Um, she's kind of struggled, her and her husband, for years, wanted to have kids, couldn't have kids, tried to adopt. God put roadblocks up. But this week, we got a, an email or an, a text that they have a, a little baby um, was he how, was he early? Yeah, very preemie. Preemie. He's five pounds. Five pounds, twelve ounces. Down in Louisiana, so they made a mad dash down to Louisiana this week. Um, he was the mom was on drugs. They had all kinds of feeding tubes in him. Um, she sent out a message, and we all started. I started praying, and I know Carla started praying. I think Linda probably started praying, and we got a message yesterday. We were out of town that um, the mom did TPR which terminated her rights so that that's in the right step and the baby's now down to one tube a feeding tube so and he did have um, water on the brain I forgot the terminology for that but he's doing really good and hopefully everything continues on and I think you know God has a plan and a purpose for everything yes, say amen amen. amen good all right good report good report Deborah's going to sing. Her song is not. You never got it, right? Okay. I have a backup. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's do um, God of My Heart. Let's do that. That is in your group. That's a new one. In fact, it's my newest one, actually. And. Um, the worship team has been learning some of my stuff so they can join me when I sing these songs. This is a new one, and this is one that um, testimony that goes with this she is give, on Tuesday nights in my home, we have, my daughter and I have a small group meeting. It's a little Bible study through her church that she goes to. And we were trying to teach them how to pray because these are all brand new baby Christians that we're teaching. And so 
you know, my daughter says, I want everybody to pray for the person on their right. It doesn't have to be a long prayer. It just has to be a prayer, just one sentence, so that you step out in faith and pray. And that's what the person that was next to me, that I was on her right, actually, whichever it went, and she prayed for me, and it was a nice prayer, and I enjoyed it, and I received it. And then she paused just a little bit at the end. It was almost like a P.S. And he goes, she goes, and give Deborah a new song. The next week when she came back, this is the song that she heard. God of my heart, I offer you my praise. God of my heart, my hands to you I'll raise. For you are holy and pure, full of right. Righteousness for all, and I will praise your holy name, for it's the name on which I call when the storms are raging on. I'm safe within your arms, there is nothing. I need you every day out of my strength, leading me along life's way. When I'm weak and I am strong, for in you the battle's won. Against the Lord, the great I am. There's no weapon at me that can win a victory. When the enemy comes at me, I watch him flee. God of my life, I've been crucified with Christ. I mean, it doesn't have a verse and a chorus and a verse and a chorus. You know, that's your standard, what you're used to. But the words in this song, he is the God of my heart. My heart worships him each and every day, whether it's in music or whether it's in the way that I walk through life. 
I want my life to be a worship unto the Lord, a praise unto his name. When people look at me, I want them to see Jesus because he is the God of my heart. He taught me how to love. You know, that's something that I wasn't raised with a lot of, especially from a father. And he taught me what love was and what it was all about. He will always be the God of my heart. And he will always be the God of my strength because that's where I draw from. When I'm weak, the word says I'm strong. Why? Because it comes from him. When I throw it over on him, cast that care, whatever it may be, over on him, he fills that need. Like our brother was saying, every need he'll feel and meet every need, no matter what it is. And he is the God of my life. Because we have been crucified with him. We have been buried in his baptism. And we will be raised when he comes again at his resurrection. He already has. He's the first fruits. We're going to follow. We're going to join him when he comes and splits that eastern sky. We're going to meet him up there. So yes, the God of my heart is the God of my strength and the God of my life. And there's not a day that goes by that we shouldn't praise his holy name. Because he is worthy. He is the one and only who is able to meet every need, who's able to pick you up when you're down, who's able to bring you through every battle that you go through. He is God Almighty. Hey, Mike. Yes. Uh, Jamie and I, when we were singing this song, why, I uh, I saw a, a tiny baby and, and, and a, laying in a little bed and I, and I saw brightness just fill that room and stand over the head of that baby's bed and and it said for for in you the battle's won there's nothing can stand against the lord just call those kids and tell them just speak christ amen speak christ over that child because there's no other name higher amen. nothing can withstand that yes nothing prayer changes things amen um this wasn't part of the agenda but <laughs> we follow the holy spirit anyway jesse bring uh heaven up here and tell tell the people her story <laughs> heaven come up here with her they've adopted this little youngin amen all right most of you have heard this but All right. I need to hear it again. <laughs> for those that have it and for Jamie's niece to know that there is prayer and it does work. She was born at 24 weeks, weighed one pound, four ounces. They told us she would never walk or talk. She has CP, um, asthma. Uh, the middle part of her brain was uh, had gray matter, so she had brain damage. This little girl can walk, talk. She's bigger than I am. <laughs> and um, she speaks more languages than most nine-year-olds do. So there, when we got that diagnosed, we came here, and we didn't know how long or if she was going to make it. And we had her dedicated to the church, and the whole church family prayed. And as you can see, God does work miracles. So. Amen. 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 Very good. Amen. Hallelujah. He's a miracle-working father. Amen. Let's sing that. He's a prayer answering father. Name of the song, He's a Prayer Answering Father. B flat. He's a prayer answering father. Giving to his family that a joy may be. He's a prayer answer. Oh, yes, he Giving to his family that their joy may be full. He's a prayer. Lord. 
ago, maybe a month or so ago, uh, my niece, or not my niece, my granddaughter, who's grown, her ex-boyfriend had threatened her that she, he's going to kill her here at the church. Now, she hasn't, she's moved away, and she hasn't been here a long, long time. He didn't know that. He's been in prison and got out. So if you saw two policemen back here, a few weeks ago, that was why. They were just making sure nothing happened. Well, today, we've got a highway patrolman that's per patrolling Highway 71 or I-49 up here, but he's friends with Carla. So he may show up to eat with us today. We're having spaghetti. And I was hungry already just looking at it back there. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and salad and dessert. So he may slip in here four services over. I don't know. And if he does, there's nothing up. Okay. <laughs> no, no problem. So anyway, thank you, musicians. <laughs> Amen. Uh, in way of announcements, next Saturday is our uh, 8 o'clock is our men's fellowship. Daniel Speckman is our speaker. He's a for, uh, for uh, Dish Network, but he's a powerful man of God, so all you guys show up and come a little bit early, and let's get our eating in, so we try not to hold it over an hour, some people go still to work, and uh, anyway, it's not going to be a long, long time, but it'll be interesting to hear him share <coughs> his, <enjoy> yep, <laughs> Robin has known him longer than anybody here, but. Anyway, so keep that in mind. And uh, also, uh, Nick, stand up. Nick and, and Hannah, would you all stand up just a minute? They've asked me to baptize them. And you can be seated now. And uh, I said to Nick the other day, he's working on my truck, and I said, how come you want me to baptize? He said, I just want to renew my faith in the Lord. So we're going to do that Sunday of August the 27th in my heated pool. Yes, Lord. <laughs> anyway, so we want to invite you all to come. Uh, I don't know if Jamie knows this yet, but he'll be fixing hamburgers and hot dogs that day for all of them that comes to the baptism. <laughs> anyway, and anybody else that wants to be baptized on August 27th, uh, we're going to close the pool a little early. Linda has, I said, that's why we have a heated pool so we can swim on December. She said, I don't like the leaves in the pool that's coming off the tree, so we'll close it up a little bit earlier. So anyway, keep that in mind, August 27th. You need to write that down and put it in your phone or whatever. Our baptism right after the service here at the church. The baptism will be at my house, but right after the service here. Uh, if you're watching on TV or uh, uh, YouTube or Facebook and you enjoy the service, uh, hit like and hit send or share or whatever your phone says. Landon and I have a phone identical, but they're totally opposite. They operate totally different. They're iPhones, and she gets emails that I'm supposed to get, and I get emails she's supposed to get. But anyway, so hit like or share. Appreciate those who have been using uh, Easy Tithe and, and have been blessing the church with uh, their offering, tithes and offerings. So anyway, I want us to stand once again. Yes. What I report, I can see much better. It's getting better and better and better. 
I can see a road sign now. <laughs> Linda says, I don't see how you drive that semi. <laughs> I said, I'll watch that white fr frost line. <laughs> Nothing will get over that. But I can see I've been reading a little bit off my phone. I couldn't do that before, so it's getting better. Thank you, Jesus. I say every day, many, many, many times a day, I have 2020 vision. I haven't had that in a long, long time. So anyway, what? Okay, use the mic up there. Joyce just texted me and said that Mike is home, upstairs, and in his recliner. All right, all right. She, you know, Mike's a pretty good-sized guy. And she says, I don't know how I'm going to get him up 14 steps. And I said, you know, I'll bet the uh, fire department would help you. And so we called a guy that Carla knows in the fire department. He said, why, sure, we do that all the time. Don't call him 30 minutes early. Just drive in your driveway so we're here. And they'll come and help him. So thanks for them. All right. Now stand again. I'm going to put my other mic on. When Jesus was speaking to groups of people, he would say, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Well, it wasn't like uh, 5,000 people there and only 200 of them had ears. He wasn't talking about that. He said, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what I'm really saying. When I'm giving a parable, I'm talking about really something else. That's just the... the uh, parable or the narrative of something greater I'm talking about. So I want us to repeat this out loud. Everybody repeat after me. I have ears to hear, I have ears to hear. and eyes to see what the Spirit is saying to me. I will be attentive to the dealing of the Spirit. I'm learning that I am God's purpose in the earth. You may be seated. I want to talk to you a little while today about the unrenewed mind. Oh, kids, I'm sorry. Kids go to class. The unrenewed mind. <clears throat> now, when a baby is born, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 8 that we have always been with God. I don't know how that happens. I don't know how it is at all. I just, I just take the scriptures to mean what it means. I don't know how I was with God from the beginning, but he said in, in Proverbs chapter 8 that before the mountains were settled, before the oceans were given their decree, we were daily his delight. I don't know if he just seen in the future and knew he was, we were with him. I don't know how all that comes, how that is, but I take it as true. I know this much, and I did some, a lot of research when I preached on, at Father's Day that in every man, there's four generations. So I've encouraged young people when they're dating, check out your boyfriend's parents, their grandparents, and their great-grandparents. Because within that guy is four generations. If they've all been drunkards all their life down there, it's probably in his genes too. Now maybe he's been like Truman, the buck stops here. You know, maybe he's, he's not going to do that anymore. But, you know, maybe there's abuse. And uh, sometimes things are triggered in, uh, in us and, and when we, we are challenged, we, we, we upchuck not really stuff in our stomach. We upchuck things that we've heard and we've taken in. And I, J.R. always told him, I said, don't listen to anything in music or rapping. He's big into rapping. Don't listen to it. Anything is telling you about mean stuff and evil stuff and angry stuff because the first challenge you have, that's how you're going to react. So anyway... As a child is born, we come from God. I've told you this story many times, but I like to hear it myself. Again, when the little baby was born in Southern California, Santa Ana, California, the little child that was two or three years older and that said, I want to speak to my baby brother. Mama said, there he is. Talk to him. She said, I don't want to talk to him by myself. 
She goes in laying on a master bed, runs into the kitchen, turns on the intercom, and she crawls up on the bed, and she says, tell me about God I forgot. Only two or three years old, this world had impinged on her, even though they had Christian parents. This world had impinged on her enough because we come from God. That little child somehow or another innately knew that. Tell me about God. I forgot. So we, we've come from God. We start a child out and real quickly, we, you know, maybe not first two or three months, but as soon as we can, we teach them this is one. This is two. And the time they're three, we say, how old are you? And they stick up three fingers. They've learned that already. We start with blocks, and we start with numbers, and we teach them, you know, we want that first child to know a lot of stuff real quick. And uh, <clears throat> what, what are we doing? We're making their mind new to this world. Right? We even teach them to, to doubt. The Lord reminded me I taught my kids to doubt. I thought, Lord, I don't teach them to doubt. Yes, you do. I remember when there was a little, I'd stand them up on the kitchen, ca kitchen cabinet. I'd say, jump to Dad. They'd just, they'd just jump. Stick them back up there. I'd say, jump to Dad. They'd jump to Dad. Then I'd take a step back. And they'd still jump. till I started getting farther back, I taught them to what? Doubt. Because now they're starting to get scared. And I've just been a good dad, I thought, <laughs> you know. But we, we, we teach them the wrong stuff sometimes. In, in, with all intentions of doing it right, uh, we, we teach them uh, to doubt. I want to start with Romans 8. And I'll depend on Norm here. Romans 8 verse 6 says, For to be what? Carly minded is what? Yes. Death. That doesn't mean cemetery. That means no life in it. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is what? Life. life and peace. Spiritual don't mean you're an angel up in the air harping around on a harp. Spiritually minded is having a mind of the spirit, following as close as you can. We're all on different levels spiritually. But as close as you can, follow what God says or would have you to do. For to be carnally minded, carnally means that which is external. Now I looked, I was a preacher for several years before I realized I was carnally minded. I thought I was spiritual because I preached out of the Bible. But carnal means that which is external. Now ask yourself if you're spiritual or, or carnally minded. Here's what carnal minded people believe. God is up there the devil is down there, heaven is up there, hell is down there. Everything we believe is outside of us. Spiritual minded people understand God is not only up there, he's here. Heaven's not only up there someplace, 50 miles above Mars, but heaven is in here as well. The Bible says we've been raised up in heavenly places. That's the place in Christ. Hell is not only down there, but hell sometimes is a situation you're in. How many can identify with that? We've all been to heaven and we've all been to hell, <laughs> right? So when we understand it's something inside of us, not just something outside of us. Carly minded people is, is everything's outside of us. So we need to renew our minds to understand how God works in this world. I've heard, <coughs> uh, let me say it this way. God is raising up, and has been doing this from, from since the death, burial, and resurrection, been raising up believers that are moving into a revelatory realm. Let me explain that. Have you ever heard people say, if I could just get a Bible, I, people call me and say, what Bible was the best for me to use? Uh, is there one that don't have the these and thous in it? Listen, we don't, we don't understand it by subjects and verbs and nouns and verbs and all that stuff. We understand it by revelation. I've met people that had PhDs that didn't, didn't understand squat about this. 
I've met people who had no education at all, had revelation, just amazing what they could see in the scripture. They couldn't even read. Somebody would read for them, and they could understand the spirit of it. Jesus said to these disciples, you, you know, I'm adding a little to this, but it's, I'll stick with the scriptures. Jesus said to the disciples, you know, they heard all the scuttlebutt around. You know what all the people saying behind the scenes? He said, who do men, who do these folks say I am? And they spoke up and said, well, some of them think you're Jeremiah, and others think you're Isaiah, and some, think, some even think you're Jer or John the Baptist. He said, but who do you think I am? And Peter spoke up, and he said, thou art the Christ. He understood, here's a Messiah that the prophets prophesied about in the Old Testament. He said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And you know what Jesus said to him? He said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood, or somebody didn't reveal that to you, but my Father which is in heaven, he revealed it. He said, Upon that rock, I'll build my church. And upon that understanding or that revelation, that's how I'm building my church. And, the, and we're not talking about a building. You know, church in the scriptures is, is from the Greek word ekklesia, which means called out ones. Every one of us has been called out. Every one of us has different talents. Every one of us has a, a, an understanding on different levels, okay? But we're called out ones. He said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for you, no, one received, no one taught you that but my Father. That's how we understand that upon that rock, that rock of understanding, that rock of revelation, that's how I'm building my church. I want to go over some words of the song that that uh, Deborah just sang. Uh, trying to find what I'm looking for here. God is my strength. God is my. He's leading me along the way. When I'm weak, then I'm strong. You know what Amos said in the Old Testament? Let the weak say, "I'm strong." That's stupid. We're supposed to say, I feel awful. I feel terrible. But he said, even under an old covenant, let the weak say, I'm strong. I'm strong. Wonder what that would do for you. It's a revelation to understand when I declare what God said above what I feel. My five senses keeps me from getting burned or having a wreck or whatever. You're... you're uh, you, your eyes, your ears, your taste, touch, smell, all those things. That's given to you to help you navigate in this world. But the, the revelation of God is higher than that. We understand there's facts. Amen? Some of you have dealt with that. I talked to Norm for church about his situation with cancer, and he's telling me what is in remission and that. That's a fact. But you know what? Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth and the life so we understand truth here's fact but truth reigns higher than fact when the facts are whatever your your uh, diagnosis is truth reigns higher than that but sometimes it takes a renewing of our mind to get from fact to truth how many's been there it says uh, when i'm weak then i'm strong for in you, the Lord giver, the battle's won. It ain't a fight. If there's a fight in you, it, the fight is just renewing your mind. Because the battle's won. We're not, we're not fighting for victory. We walk in victory. But we have to renew our mind to that understanding from time to time. It says there's no weapon aimed at me that can win a victory. She had to have a revelation that you can't write stuff like that. If she didn't have a revelation, it'd be poor old me. If I was raining soup, I'd have a fork type thing, you know. When the enemy comes in, I watch him flee. Oh, that's good. I like that kind of, kind of wording. It, 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 it helps 
what God is doing in me and what God is doing in you. Our unrenewed mind is our greatest enemy. Because of traditions we hold, the unrenewed mind continually incites jealousy, disunity, uh, whatever you want to add to that, whatever list is. An unrenewed mind always, uh, well, I have, I have a reason to feel this way. You know, after all, we give them all the reasons why we feel this way. You know, if a, a dead dog won't bite you, right? You can kick him, step on his head, still won't bite you. So sometimes we are, how can I say it, carnally still alive. But when we understand God is the strength of my life, and we can begin to say, when I feel the weakest, thank God, His strength is working in me. It don't always happen like that. I'd like to get strength the next day, wouldn't we, Terry? <laughs> anyway, but He's the strength of my life. I'm going to say something because... I'm under pressure. I'm, I'm going to say something. So let's say something that agrees with God. As we begin to understand God's plan, we are actually operating in, and don't let this word scare you, in an eternal realm. When we say what God says, we're operating in a realm higher than the system of this world. And I'll give you an example. And it's timeless. That's prayer. You can pray for somebody up here, and the Bible talks about laying on of hands, and we do that here. And the scriptures even says in some places they, they cut off, made handkerchiefs and send them out. I know people that's, I know a lady that prayed for her husband, and she took a handkerchief and had it anointed at church, and she put it under his pillow. He was a godless guy. I mean, the, the lady I'm talking about right now lives in Kessler, she's passed on by now, I'm sure, but she would be kneeling in prayer at her bed and her husband would come out and shoot her profile out on the wall. Right over her, her head and her back. and He'd shoot it out with a pistol. Well, most people would have left. But she prayed. She anointed a prayer cloth and put it under his pillow. It wasn't too long. He gave his life to the Lord. And when we met him, he was powerful in the Lord. He's walking with the Lord, but we didn't know him in those days. But just prayer works. There's other ways of kinds of prayer, but there's times you prayed for people all the way across the, the world somewhere, and, and prayer would touch them. You know, I forget the whole story how it goes, but there's a fellow come to Jesus, said, My daughter's sick, and Jesus prayed for her and said, go your way. And so as he went back home, he met an, a, a messenger in the way and said, hey, your daughter's fine. And he said to her, when did it happen? And he said, well, I'm just making this part up. Oh, it happened at 3 o'clock yesterday. It did give a time frame in the Bible. And it was the same time Jesus prayed the day before. So it's timeless. It's just, it's, it don't have to be in person. It, it Prayer is, a, is an eternal realm. I don't know any other way to say it. That, the word God gave me this, this week, an eternal realm, operating in an eternal realm, something higher than the realm of this world. When we worship God to the place that we're kind of lost in the spirit, sometimes, and I'm playing my guitar, and I'm sitting over here, and I'm just, thank you, Father, I just praise you, Lord. I forget my mistakes I made yesterday. When I'm not doing that, and everybody's praising the Lord and having a good time, I'm thinking, man, I, I, I yelled at Linda yesterday, and I shouldn't have done that. And it gets me off track. And I'm, I'm ashamed of that. I'm guilty of that. And I think of shame and guilt and all that stuff. But when you're just lost in the Spirit, that goes away. We move into a realm of, of the eternal realm of God. And 
something about just worshiping the Lord. It causes your, your thoughts of yesterday, your thoughts of a year ago, and your thoughts of what happened a month ago or two years ago or, that haunts you all the time. Somehow or another, the Spirit calls that just to go away. Isn't that wonderful? God is raising up a generation that will move and walk in that eternal realm. And we don't want it to just happen for 10 minutes on Sunday. But we want it to happen all the time. This is an old story. Probably Nick hadn't heard it. Maybe Doug hadn't heard it. Maybe Debbie hadn't heard it. Good to see you, Debbie. But anyway, you've heard my story. I left Joplin. I was driving a Walmart truck. I started praying in the Holy Ghost all the way to St. James. Prayed to, I prayed this in tongues, but I was praying the tune, Yes, Jesus Loves Me. And I couldn't get off of it. Just couldn't get off of it. When I wanted to quit, it just come out of me, and I just kept singing in tongues. Got to St. James. I got a message across my computer. It said, Call, what's that hospital? St. Luke's. Call St. Luke's Hospital ASAP. So I pulled over after I went through the gate, got checked in, called, and they said, Dale needs to talk to you. Dale sat back there about where Sarah's sitting. <laughs> he never sang a lick. I was watching when we sang. I never seen his lips move. But once in a while he'd go like that. And he has had two or three days to live. He's on the ventilator. He pulls the ventilator out himself and sings, yes, Jesus loves me. He said, I want to talk to Mike. Well, they'd already called the family, and he have a son, Mike. He's sitting on the floor in the hospital. He jumps up. He said, no, I need to speak to preacher Mike. And he sung that to me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Never sang in his life that I knew of. Yes, Jesus loves me. They dismissed him two days later. The nurses and the doctors are just so flabbergasted. Oh, I don't know what to do. What do you want? He said, man, I want some meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and gravy. <laughs> he said, it may take a while, but we'll get them for you, you know. I'm telling you, prayer works. I don't know why I sang in tongues that whole trip, but God was doing something. The Bible says in Jude 20, we're, we're building up our most holy faith. Another place says when you pray in the Spirit, you're praying mysteries. I had no idea that he had two days to live in the hospital. I had no idea of that. But I just sang what was in my spirit. That's, we call that an eternal realm. It's a realm of the spirit that, you know, sometimes I got out of the truck and talked to the coordinators. I wasn't in that realm, <laughs> you know, at that time. But it just works. It works every time. God's raising up people in this day that will... They'll walk in that eternal realm, bypassing much of what's dominating our world. Why do so many people have such a hard time trying to renew their mind? Let's go to Matthew 6. 22, I think. The light of the body is the what? Eye. If therefore thine eye is single, your whole body will be full of light. I want you to think about the word light. If I could write up there above that in Princess, your understanding. He's not talking about totally about the physical body, but he used that as, a, as an example. The understanding of the body is the eye. You know, uh, the Apostle Paul said, I pray that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. That you will know what is the hope of your calling. I pray that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. That's what he prayed. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened. How many times do you tell your kids or maybe your spouse or your grandkids, or even the neighbor. Do you see what I'm saying? Don't we use that term? Do you see what I'm saying? No, they don't see it. They understand it. They understand that we, we use that term. 
do you see what I'm saying? The next verse says, But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of what? Darkness. darkness. If therefore the light or your understanding is in thee is dark, or darkness, how great is our darkness? If everything you're taking in is of a darkness or uh, unregenerate or unregenerate or uh, of an ungodly fashion, that's what's going to come out of you. That's exactly what's going to come out of you. So make sure as much as you can. Uh, I, I appreciate what uh, Deborah's doing with at her house, teaching a new group, just how to pray. Just how to pray. I remember when I was seven years old, and my dad was, he was a sawmill guy, and he'd come in every day. He had the mill set up pretty close to our house. He'd walk down to the house, and Mom would have dinner on the table. Dinner is, is m noon for me. <laughs> my grandkids said, no, dinner is evening. I said, no, I had dinner at 12. <laughs> I ate supper at night. <laughs> but anyway, Dad would come in for, for you city people for lunch. <laughs> and uh, mom would have dinner on the table and he'd wash up and sit down and eat and when he'd eat he'd finish his hour out in worship sometimes he would pray but most time he played an instrument that day he was playing the accordion take up thy cross and follow me I'm out on the front porch playing with my little, my little trucks and I heard that something touched my heart and I started crying never had that feeling ever before and I went and stood by dad and he just kept playing that accordion, singing, take up thy cross and follow me. I hear the Savior call. I put my arm around his leg, pull myself up to him, and heard Mom say, I think he got stung by a wasp. <laughs> I'd been screaming if I'd been stung by a wasp. Dad, I heard Dad say, no, the Holy Spirit's dealing with him. Leave him alone. Dad kept playing. I didn't think he's ever going to quit. So I finally went back out to the front porch I knelt by an old truck seat Dad had out there. And I pretty soon I heard the music stop. Heard Dad walking across that hardwood floor and he's coming out there. He wrapped his arm around me, felt like it was 27 foot long that day. And he said, Mike, this is God. Talk to him like he's sitting here. I'm sure he led me in some kind of a prayer. I don't remember any of that. He did say this. He said, in life, you're going to find people will love you and leave you. But God will never leave you. Amen. You know, Larry, that stuck with me for a lot, all these years. God will never, ever leave me. I might walk away from him from time to time, but he'll never leave me. He's always there. He's always there. So keep your mind as much as possible. I hear people playing music when they work and all that, and that's great. But sometimes I see it here, the music is always detrimental to what they want in life. And they think it's great. And then they wonder why things go awry. They wonder why things go sour. Wonder why things go bad. Amos said, when I'm weak, I say I'm strong. Given place to this eternal realm to work in in the nasty now and now. Man. The Bible says God is light and in him there's no darkness at all. Whenever God speaks, whatever's in him comes out. You remember in Genesis chapter 1, it said, let there be light, and wonder what happened. It became light. He said, uh, let the earth bring forth grass. Guess what happened? Grass came forth, amen? On day six, he said, let there be light in the firmament. And that's when the sun and the moon and all that took place. was out. And then the Bible says we're created in his very image. We think we're in image, uh, his image just because we can breathe. Well, that's one, one aspect of it, one understanding of it. But he's created us to speak life. The Bible says to be carnally minded is death. That means there's no life in being carnally minded. To be spiritually minded is life and what? Peace. If anything we need in this hour is peace. 
anything on news that you hear is always uh, a downer. Once in a while, they'll they'll rescue a cat out of a well or something. <laughs> you know, have a little good news. But most of the time, the news that you get is is always not very good. So, in order to counteract that, we got to know something about what God's doing. I like what Dave said. God's plan isn't always ours. But I I look at things and and I think, how can we go any longer like this? As they say down the country, God's got something up his sleeve (laughs) that we don't always know about. But so I have to hold to the fact God is faithful. God will see me through. We've had a a large trucking company just recently close their doors. 22,000 people laid off. Some of them got to go to other jobs. But, you know, uh, you say, how's that going to affect me? Some guy said, well, are you going to sell your trucks? I'm like, no. No. God is my source. He might use this. He may use that. If this goes down, this will open up. He's the door. So, God is faithful. When he speaks, whatever's in him comes out. Everything that was spoken came into existence. And we're created in his very likeness. In closing, let me ask you a question. What are you speaking in your everyday life? What are you speaking on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? When situations come up, what are you speaking? Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Can you put that on the screen, Norm? It says, death and what? Life. Life, or where? In the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. I looked up in some other translations. It said, Philip's translation said, they that indulge in it shall eat the fruit thereof. Moffat's translation says, death and life are determined by the tongue. Knox says, of life, and death, the tongue holds the key. Go to Mark 11 as we close today. Mark 11, verse 23. Now I want to I want to preface this. I've just learned this recently. When we renew, let me say this: when we renew our minds, that's an ongoing uh, situation. I'm still learning. Doug, the more I learn, the more I see I need to know. I'm still learning, and and I might have covered this area real good. I've learned this area, this area, and this area. But there's other areas that I haven't learned yet. And I'll be reading it, and it just pops open to me. Man, I didn't realize, I'll say it out loud. I didn't realize that was what that meant. But it says here, we can extrapolate from this our own situation says for verily I send you that whosoever shall say to this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but believe those things which he believe those things which he what thank you shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he thinks saith your words are so important you may have a mountain in your life. It may, we may not need to move a mountain, a hill out here. But Doug may have a mountain in his life that nobody knows about. Nick may have a mountain. Larry may have one. I might have one. So I need to speak to that. And the Bible says, whatever I say, when I believe it in my heart, That's why sometimes I have to say it and 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 say it it so I'll believe it. I don't have to convince God of anything, but I have to say it and say it and say it. If I believe in my heart, it says, Therefore I send you whatsoever things you desire when you pray. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. When do we believe it? When we pray. Not the next day, but when we pray it. That's when we believe it. One more story. These stories just keep popping up. You'll forgive me, right? Uh, 
Linda Ives and Terry, they know this lady, Sister Paige from Salem. Her, her son was in the hospital. She said, Mike, I need you to take me to St. Louis to catch an airplane. And we're 120 miles from St. Louis. I said, oh, I said why? He said, well, Harold, wasn't his name Harold? Or Harold's brother? He had, anyway. Anyway, I said, my son-in-law's having surgery. He's just, they say he's a human vegetable, but they didn't even want to do surgery. He said, he'll die in a day or two. His brain is dead. And, uh, but the, the family wants him to go ahead and operate, ex experiment. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, what? Exploratory surgery, yeah. So pray. Well, we'd prayed on Wednesday night at church. And so I took her to the airport. They took him to, I mean, he's already in the hospital. They took him for surgery and he died. And they, they come out to the family and said, what funeral home do you use? And they call the funeral home to come get him. In the meantime, Sister Paige, they're in Troy, Michigan. They call, she said, would you pray? They're in surgery. And I said, no, I won't. Now, I'm not quite that brave now. <laughs> but I said, we prayed Wednesday. We prayed Wednesday night, and it said on there, when, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. We believed Wednesday night. And I was in my 20s then, <laughs> so I was a little more brave to say this, but I said, no, won't pray anymore. We already prayed. Now, I will thank the Lord that he heard us. That's a form of prayer. It's a praise report. She called back. They was loading him in the hearse, and they saw his breathing. They have it on record. He was, dead nine minutes. They dismissed him a few days later and two weeks he was driving his family to California on vacation. I'm telling you, prayer works when you believe it. It's important that we believe it when we pray. Sometimes we pray and soon we say, amen, oh, well, I don't know what we're going to do, Lord. I don't know what we're going to do. When, believe it when you pray it. And you'll have it. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Go ahead. It's my strength and my power. He maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet. And He sends me upon high places. Oh, God is my strength and my power. This is taken out of the scriptures. I guess I need to use this other mic. It's taken out of the scriptures. <clears throat> Hines is like a deer. And I uh, did some research many years ago on this. Testing one, two. Hines is like a deer. First of all, a Hines cannot give, will not give birth until it storms. When it's lightning and thunders, when it will give birth. But also, it has an ability that on a cliff, when there's when there's no uh, testing, there's a little rock just sticking out about this big. Everybody see that? A deer, the hinds, it's a deer-like animal. It has the ability to leap up there, put all four feet on that one little spot, and be firm. That's where this song come from, says. God is my strength and my power. He maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like high feet. And he sets me up on high places. Well, now God is my strength and my power. He maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like high sweet. And he sets me upon high places. Amen. Any of you need prayer for any situation today? Hallelujah. 
Maybe you have a mountain in your life you want us to pray for. Okay. We prayed. We're believing. Go lay your hands on Dave. She pointed to Dave. Okay. Father, we thank you. Well, we've already prayed for, for Dave. We thank you, Father. You're working in him. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Every diagnosis that's been given to him, we submit it to truth. It's a fact, but we submit it to truth. And we thank you truth reigns higher and higher and higher than facts and diagnosis that are really true. But we're going to think on things that are higher. Think on truth. Thank you, Father. The Bible says you took the stripes on your back. You, they took you to a whipping post and whipped you, give you 39 stripes. The Bible said that was for our healing. So since we already prayed for day, we're just thanking you for that. Thanking you for that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. We declare right now that we'll see manifestation of our prayers this week. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We have spaghetti in the back and salad and desserts. So uh, I'm going to pray with the food right now. So as soon as you get back there, you can just eat. Father, we thank you. Receive this food with thanksgiving. And it's sanctified be your word and prayer. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. amen. As soon as we eat, come back in here. and We'll have a little sh short church meeting and, and be dismissed. God bless you. Let's go eat. <laughs>